goes, I'm going to tell you there's at least one person you know you will tell to watch this show today. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me sit my bubble skirt down. <laughs> okay. So... <laughs> So this season, we've talked a lot about what it's like dating, right? We've had conversations about whether you should date them till you hate them. <laughs> we even had two singles sign up for a first date cold plunge. It's this new concept that in your most uncomfortable situation that you can somehow find love. I see you shaking your head. <laughs> but he's cute and she's cute. I might have done that one my single day. Okay. So, a recent article caught my eye. It said, and this was the headline, True Star, I'm at home, I'm scrolling. It said, help, I suck at first dates. <laughs> first of all, I didn't know you could say that word on TV, but <laughs> now you can. And it caught my attention. The column was, it first ran in something called John Paul Brammer's Hola Papi newsletter, which you can find on Substack. Okay, in the article, an anonymous guy says it's easy for him to get first dates, but... He has trouble getting to the second date. He questions if he's interesting enough, if he's charming enough. It's a question a lot of people in the dating world ask themselves. I'll be honest, when I was dating, you know, you like somebody on the first date and you're like, ooh, what, are we gonna get a number two? <laughs> and then when you want the number two and they don't want the number two, <laughs> you start like wondering like, oh God, what did I do wrong? Did I talk, to my thing was, did I talk too much? I was always a, Surprise, surprise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did I talk too much? What did I do? So today we're talking about why people are feeling stuck when it comes to dating and what you can do to make it to the second date, the third date, and maybe even something long term. Our first guest, Sabrina Zohar, is a dating coach who has made it her mission to help people find their person. Okay, but before she comes out, I do want you to know, we have something that's gonna happen this hour. So we did a first date in a plunging cold water. There's this thing about literal blind dates where you blindfold yourself. In this hour, we're gonna have a couple who go on a blind date. We can see them, they can't see us. <laughs> and y'all have submitted some of the questions that they're going to allow me to ask them while blindfold, and then they're gonna take it off in front of us. Not their clothes, the blindfold, <laughs> the blindfold. Okay, so <laughs> I had to clarify that. So, by the way, back to our first guest. Millions go to her social media page to tune into her weekly podcast. It's called Do the Work. And you hear people say that the lie, I did the work so I could fall in love. Well, she offers clear and actionable advice on all things dating, like how much texting is the right amount? And am I an anxious dater or an avoidant dater? I don't even know if that is, but it sounds good. And when should we have the what are we talk? And my cousin, oh, I shake, I can't tell my cousin's business. Okay. <laughs> All right, but meanwhile, let's get to our guest. Sabrina is not afraid to tell it like it is. Take a look. And I think for me, like, I'm tired of this, like, no, you're living in your masculine if you reach out to a guy. And it's like, no, bitch, you know what I'm doing? Taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, if somebody made a plan with me for a week from now, I don't know if it's going to happen. I, I also have a ton of stuff I want to get done, and I have a lot of plans. So I put it in pencil. And I always had a backup plan that night of like, okay, well, if I don't hear from the guy or if like I confirm and he doesn't confirm with me, no worries. I'm going to take myself out to dinner. That way, I detach from the outcome. You are mm -hmm. you have every right to text somebody and say, hey, can't wait to see you tonight. And if you're sitting here telling me, well, I don't want to have to put the effort in, good luck with your relationship then. Let me know how that's going to work for you. All right, there you go. So whatever question you may have, Sabrina has the answer, and she's with us today. Cam I'm already cheering on Sabrina Zohar. Okay. okay, you have won over our audience before we even talk, <laughs> because I think it's a relief to see someone really talking about the modern situation and being frank and honest about it. I'm very much a New Yorker with the advice that I give. I live in San Diego, and so that's been a point of contention just in and of itself. But I think at the end of the day, I come at it with, especially with a lot of advice that I give or any of the conversations that I have, not from this bird's eye view of like, well, I've been married for 30 years yeah. and I met my husband at the grocery store, so go there. I come at it as, I was in the trenches with you. Yeah. I understand I was the poster child of what we call anxious attachment style. And so for me, I really understand how it feels to feel right. anxious and not understand what's going on and then how to combat. That. I love that because, okay, so full disclosure, most of my producers are far younger than me at 53. They're in their 20s and their 30s, and they said that dating is like a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. A straight 
I, I mean, I'm not laughing at you, I'm laughing with you. <laughs> a dumpster fire. I mean, I felt that way, though, when I was dating. It was like, oh, my... I got to the point where I didn't want another failed relationship. And so I started avoiding dating because I was... I'm a big communal person, so I would introduce my friends to everybody I dated. And then they'd be like, what happened to him? I'm like, eh. <laughs> and then I think, you know, it's like a sitcom. I have to explain why you've been written out. And that was hard. But the other night, I was with Steven. We were at a restaurant in New York. And it's so funny, because New York is tiny, as you know. And so this couple was next to us. I could tell it was a first date. And I knew we were doing this show, so I started sliding over. <laughs> she was being very performative. And I could yeah. tell. She was like, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. and she kept putting her jacket down, pulling up. She didn't know if she wanted to give him shoulder, no shoulder. And I'm watching all of this. <laughs> and you say that's common, like this, this performative thing. Unfortunately, what I see more often than not, that I think really the reason why people don't necessarily elevate themselves to that second date, that third date, is because there's this kind of trajectory that we travel through. So on the first date, it's of course, you want someone to like you. And so the yeah. whole time, the focus is on, are they gonna choose me? But really, where we need to start to shift our mindset is, wait a minute, but how do I feel when I'm with this person? Do I even care about what they're saying? But it's only the first date. How do you get that heavy that quick? Well, that's the problem. A lot of people are trauma dumping, and we want to avoid that, right? Oh. So, yes, welcome to the terminology. <laughs> so, when it comes to dating, it's like we want to have a balance between asking questions of depth and trying to understand where somebody's been, but also then not saying, oh, well, let me tell you about my childhood trauma and all of these experiences right. that I've had. So how, what should, what is the, right, what is true? So what should the temperature, because this show is really about the first date. We've had shows about all the other. I want to keep it to the first date. So on the first date, is it supposed to be easy breezy? Is there a time limit the first date? I try to stay away from hard, fast rules because okay. I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, goodness, I, I didn't do this. I must have messed okay, it up. Okay, that's good. Okay, thank you for that correction. Of so, course. But no trauma. Dating. Don't start spilling all your beans. Exactly. I would okay. I would avoid talking about anything that's like truly traumatic. Like I'm not gonna walk in and tell people about like this issue I had with my brother when I was a child when okay. I don't know who you are. Okay. The reason we want to avoid that is because if somebody is might potentially narcissistic, what they're doing is they're gonna say all of those insecurities, they're gonna hold that in their back pocket, oh. and then they're gonna bring that out into you in the future. So well, keep your trauma because you don't know who you're giving that story to. We don't know who these okay. people are. Okay. All right, okay. The last one before we go, okay, because I, this was this struck me. In that article, the dater said that on the first date, he was self-conscious. He doesn't feel that he's cool enough, that his life doesn't appear interesting. All I have to say to that person is, like, who are you trying to kid, you or them? At the end of the day, wow. who you are is who you are. So if my life isn't interesting enough for you, that's cool. Go find someone else. Like... And that, I think, is, this is where we come with that authenticity piece and the accountability. This person can say, well, I just, I guess no one likes me. It's like, or what we can do is we can reframe that and say, maybe I haven't met someone I like. Oh. Maybe I haven't met somebody that I connect with. And maybe I, how I'm showing up on these dates isn't resonating with other people. So I want to look internally of what yeah. can I control. I can only control myself. You're going to have everybody on the second day. Okay, <laughs> we're, 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 I got to ask you one more. Tonight, tonight, if people are watching and they have a first date coming up soon, what is that one thing you want us to know going on that first date? If you got one, okay, listen up, call everybody you know is about to go on the first date. You're probably not gonna like what I have to say. Stop with the texting and the digital engagement before the date. It, it is such... Here's the reality, you're not getting this time back. You are not gonna get those moments, those days you spend texting with somebody back and forth, that time is gone. Then if you go on that date, you can't stand this person, now you feel this whole false sense of intimacy that you've created, cut the digital, focus on spending time with someone, ask questions of depth, and then you get to decide, do I even wanna see this person again or not? Ooh, I love it! Drop me gems! Thank you to Sabrina, be sure to check out her podcast, Do The Work.